All right, we are halfway through the season, and here are the current odds for MVP. It had been Josh Allen, wire to wire. Well, we're halfway through the wire, and now Mahomes has taken over. Mm -hmm. I think the, the Josh Allen injury and the loss on Sunday, I'm sure, had something to Jack do with Mahomes. that. We don't know right. whether or not Allen's going to miss any time, and we saw Patrick Mahomes play great in primetime on Sunday night. But look at Jalen Hurts at second there, Chris. Yeah, surprising. I, well, but not they're undefeated. I know exactly right. I, I think that's that's you know, Mike. You nobody clarifies that better than you do. The quarterback of the team that could be the one seed or maybe the really good two seed. It doesn't really. They're in the conversation almost always as long as they're not like the weak point of the football team. And he's certainly not the weak point of the football team. He's he's played phenomenal this year. So I understand that. Do I put him in the same class as some of the other guys there? No. I don't. I don't think the same amount of pressure is on him as, you know, Mahomes, Allen, and Lamar Jackson, where it's all about them. Uh, and so that's where I always push back against that. But uh, nonetheless, he deserves to be in this conversation for sure. Okay, so we're going to hand out awards based on what we've seen so far, not who we think the favorites are to win it, but based on the first nine weeks of the season. We're going to do several of them, all yeah. the major ones, if we can get to them, and I think we can. Cool. MVP, who is your Nine-week NFL MVP. I, I'm still going to go with Josh Allen as we sit here right now. I am. It, it's really close between him and Patrick Mahomes. I am. I feel like Josh Allen has, you know, maybe been a little bit more extraordinary at times than Patrick Mahomes. But, man, I, it, it's, it's nitpicking. It really is. I think the only thing I look at right now is like Josh Allen's rushing and his ability to call design quarterback runs is something maybe that puts him over the edge. But he's like, uh, he's he's the almost the, he's one of the greatest one man shows I've ever seen. I mean, again, even last week we could praise the Jets and go, oh, no, the Jets they did all these good things. And I sit there and watch back that film yesterday and I go, I don't know if they ever really stopped Buffalo, other than Buffalo just did a few dumb things in the game. You know, he's he's almost unstoppable. So I'll go with Josh Allen, but Patrick Mahomes, like, nipping at his heels. I was leaning Mahomes. Yeah. And I thought of something as you were saying that. Yeah. A very simple test. Very simple test. Flip Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Put Josh Allen on the Chiefs and put Patrick Mahomes on the Bills. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the teams? How do you feel about the the quarterbacks? And and I, I – look, well, you put Josh Allen with, with Andy Reid – Whoa. And kind of gets to what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. With the Bills relying too much on Josh Allen. The offense is officially diverse. The running game is non-existent. Of course, it's not exactly thriving in Kansas City. But but if you flip those two guys, I would I would feel like the Chiefs are the clear favorite to go to the Super Bowl and win it. No and you know how I feel about Patrick Mahomes. I it's 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 a thin it's a thin margin. Yeah, but you question whether think, Mahomes can make Buffalo work the way Allen makes it. That's what you're questioning. Right. Right. Because of the support in Kansas City versus right. the support in Buffalo. But they're both awesome. There's no question they're the best two. They are the two clear candidates in my mind. With yeah. Jalen Hurts kind of on the fringes because the Eagles right. are unbeaten. Right. I, I'll, I'll go Josh Allen. After thinking about this alternate reality where Allen is with the Bills, or Chiefs, excuse me, and Mahomes is with the Bills, I... I that's the 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 photo finish. Yeah, Josh Allen. I hear it. That that I'm with you. I think you did a good job of explaining that. All right, defensive player of the year. The betting odds here, it's not even close. And I don't know how much time we even need to spend on it. Is there anyone other than Micah Parsons? Well, I mean, we, Matt Judon, of course, has jumped on the scene. And, I mean, every week getting sacks. I think the guy at the bottom of the list deserves a little bit of, like, acknowledgement here. Von Miller, I mean, he has closed out some games and made some incredibly big plays for the Buffalo Bills. But, no, you're right, Mike. I mean, Max Crosby is, is probably worthy of being in this conversation, too, but they're not good enough. Michael Parsons is the defensive player. There's, I, I think it's kind of a – it's it's close to official. I think it's there. I think he's the best defensive player in football now. I don't mean to say that and disrespect Aaron Donald, but just the guy's everywhere in every facet of the game. And then – you know, he's one of the NFL sack leaders, and I guarantee he doesn't have the same amount of opportunities to rush the quarterback 
that the rest of the NFL sack leaders have because he's playing stand-up linebacker and he's in coverage and doing things of that nature. So effect of the game, I still think Micah Parsons should have been the defense MVP last year. I know T.J. Watt had all those sacks and everything, but we talked about Micah Parsons on Sunday Night Football all 18 weeks last year. And look what he did. Look what he did. Look what he did. Right? And that's where, yeah, he's the man right now. So we're there together in that one. Yeah. Um, and, and Judon leads the NFL right now with 11 and a half sacks. You know, yeah. Darius Smith has been a sack machine right. for the Vikings this year. And, and you see that the players from the really good teams end up getting extra consideration when it's time to make the votes. But I think it's going to be difficult because Parsons already has that reputation. And the stats just enhance the presence. And if he is among the top five in sacks that just that makes it even well it's insane this is the guy he can do anything he does everything yeah. and he's one of the reasons why the cowboys are so good this he's year. not All getting right. to rush the passer like michael miles garrett is every play he you know, he doesn't get those opportunities that's what's amazing is you go I, the percentage of sacks he gets per rush attempt i think is the thing that would blow people out of the water if they really saw it i want to go to coach of the year now and i'm sorry to go out of order okay. but i feel like that one's a more compelling conversation than some of these others some of these others are pretty close and i don't think we're going to argue all that much all right go i'm going to go coach then comeback player of the year coach of the year nick sirianni is the betting favorite and look they're undefeated but to me coach of the year is always who best exceeds i know the expectations right entering the season right and it comes down to Pete Carroll, Kevin O'Connell, and Brian Dayball. <laughs> and, and, and. Well, I Salah. Could go, I could go two. Th I could go O'Connell, Carroll, Dayball, and Salah. Right now, I, I'm I'm feeling it with O'Connell because of the dramatic transformation of the organization yeah. that he has presided over, and how they're winning close games, whereas in the past they'd lose close games. How the players are being propped up with optimism and hope instead of being beaten down with fear and pessimism and negativity and it's it's cr created and they, this happens all the time team fires a coach and they try to find a guy who's the exact opposite personality wise and then when they fire him they go the other way it, they ping pong back and forth but this has been a dramatic shift and this team is seven and one, and nobody would have expected the Vikings to be seven and one. So there are plenty of great candidates, plenty of worthy candidates, but I give it to O'Connell over Sirianni. I I I hear you there. You know, again, I I don't want to discredit what Sirianni has done either. This is special, and what he did last year was damn good. But I, uh, you know, he's got I, a damn good team. Well, that's he's what I was going to say. I, mean, I don't think anybody team. anybody that was following the league thought the Eagles could be doing this, right? I mean, we all thought there's a good chance when the schedules came out. When we got before the regular season and we looked at the schedules even one more time, we we were then saying, man, the Eagles could be nine and one going into week ten or going into week eleven. So that's where it's not shocking. I kind of tend to go towards your line of thinking. The guys who have totally exceeded expectations and come out of nowhere. O'Connell's certainly a good one. I, damn. Hey, Salah's a good one, too, though. Remember, we were looking at the front end of that schedule and saying, then, who did they piss off I, at 345 well, Park Avenue? I don't remember having this many options ever. Uh, I don't. I, where it's this close, and you can make arguments for all of them. I can go, it's a good argument. I get it. I like it. You know, Mike McDaniel, of course, with the Miami Dolphins. Now, their team was good. I guess more we questioned about can his personality and stuff work, and he's improved them, their offense especially. But damn, Carroll, Dable, and Sala, those are ones that I just look at. I want to go with Pete Carroll, and that's who I'm going to go with here. I'm going to go with Pete Carroll. Dayball certainly is right there with it too because nobody expected that. But Pete Carroll, come on. I mean, we were talking about just trade DK Metcalf, blow it up, to get, it, get, it, get it over with, just start the rebuild. You got no chance. And now they're one of the most exciting teams to watch. They're in the thick of things, and they're real. And I know that's why he's Pete Carroll. I, I feel like I'd go with Pete Carroll right now if you gave me a vote. Well, and, you know, with Dayball, too. I know. I mean, same because thing. Carroll's got a bunch of great new rookies that were drafted by John Schneider, but they've been developed by Pete Carroll. Right. But Dayball walked into a spot where there wasn't much they could do to overhaul that roster in one year, and he's gotten more out of it than we ever dreamed that he uh, could. Ever. It really is amazing. It's the, great, the toughest maybe, one ever. Maybe the answer will become obvious when week 18 has come and gone, but it's not going to be a cakewalk. And uh, at some point, I don't, I don't expect the Eagles to go 17. No, if they do, then just give it to Nick Sirianni. If they go 17 and 0, I'll concede 
he's the coach of the year. Sure, I will. Nine and zero is not enough to just say, well, you get it because you haven't lost a game yet. Um, but but if if they have losses, it's going to be very difficult to draw the lines between Eagles with Sirianni, Vikings with O'Connell, Seahawks with Carroll, Giants with Dayball, Jets with Sala, and whoever else may rise up. Maybe Jeff Saturday will be the coach of the year <laughs> by the time it's all said and done. I think I'm kidding. Who knows? Comeback player of the year. That's the next one I want to do. Because the, the comeback player of the year award fascinates me. There's no definition for it. What are you coming back from? Matthew Stafford was comeback player in 2011. What was he coming back from? He just had arrived on the scene. Ryan Tannehill, 2019. Shereen Williams' observation was, what's he coming back from? A career of sucking? <laughs> so, and, and she's a very big Texas A&M supporter, and he went to A&M, but she, you know, she tells it like it is. So, you know, are you coming back from injury? Are you coming back from adversity? Are you coming back from something in season? Are you coming back from something last season? Are you finally achieving the potential you had coming into the NFL? I don't, I don't know how you define it, Chris, but I'm leaning Geno Smith, as are the sports books right now. When you look at the favorite, he's, he's coming back from years in the wilderness of a guy that wasn't regarded as a potential starter, and now he's one of the best quarterbacks in football. I, I mean, I, I don't think you can even, I don't think you can even argue this one. I mean, Saquon's a great story, but I mean, Geno Smith is third in football in quarterback rating. All right, I don't love quarterback rating, but it's still 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. They're not playing through their defense. He's winning games. He, I mean, he's like a baller. And yes, he hasn't played in forever. I, I'm, I'm with Gino here all the way. As much as some of the guys on the list, I, I got respect for what they did. Gino wins it. And if we get hyper technical about the word comeback, comeback implies that there was something that you did that fell off and you came back. He never, the, he well the he league never made him fall any, off. No, the league made I know, him fall but my, off. Right, I know, but the comeback implies you were here. Yeah, right. That's why I had a problem with Matthew Stafford. I got you. Right, third year and two disappointing seasons, and he finally has a breakout. That would be like making two of the comeback player of the year. What did he come back from? Yeah, he's finally had a good year. So that's why I have a problem with I got this you. very loose vague idea and and i'm still saying geno smith because to me it's this circuitous route of being a backup and being overlooked and being downtrodden he's coming he's coming back to the potential that we believed he had coming into the nfl that's that's the only way you can argue that it's a comeback player of the year but you got saquon barkley you got christian mccaffrey who Missed a lot yeah. of time last year due to injury, and Barkley's had struggles with his knee yeah. and getting back to the guy that he was in 2018. He fits the definition more he, cleanly. He would be second for me. Right, right. And by the book, he is that he fits that term to what you're saying. Sure. All right. Offensive rookie of the year. Going to Seattle again. I mean how can it how can it not be Ken Walker the third? Brees Hall and Ken Walker the third would have been the two top candidates. But once you get injured, it's the other guy. The other guy comes in and fills the void. No doubt. So it's right. It's Ken Walker the third right now. That's a no brainer. I mean, me. he's one of the running backs that's leading the league in yards per carry. And then, I mean, he's seven touchdowns already at this point of the year. Didn't the, you, you look at their success of their team? Kind of when he became the guy, things started to kind of skyrocket from there. I mean, again, Mike, I, I think this guy's already in the conversation of best running back in football. I, you know, they're just. There's not many people on earth that can do what he can do. This is like, we're watching, you know, uh, we're watching special, special, special running back here. A guy that can run you over like we're showing here, run through arm tackles, make you miss, break your ankles, and then outrun a bunch of guys who run 4-3 in secondaries and they can't catch them. Uh, that's that's really rare. Uh, this, is, this is a guy that has a chance, at least for the way it looks right now, to be an all-time great. So that's no brainer here for this one. All right, let's shift over then. And and other guys who are on the list, we saw Chris Olave. Damian Pierce has been phenomenal. Definitely. 139 yards 100%. rushing on Thursday night. He's the brightest spot on that Houston roster. And yes. Hopefully they put other players around him he's while he still has tread on the tires. Uh, but uh, I think I think it will be Ken Walker, the third, barring uh, an injury that really derails the second half of his career. And as we know, with the running back position, that can happen. Defensive rookie of the year. In my mind, there's two, and I know which way I'm leaning. Where are you leaning? I, I'm leaning to the guy in front. I am. 
Uh, it, Sauce Gardner, I, I, you know, it, it's phenomenal. So that's where it, it's, you know, this is to me where, you know, again, Tariq Woolen's special. He is. He's He's got a chance to be one of these guys that's a top DB in football. You know, Devin Lloyd for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He is everywhere. He's amazing. But Sauce Gardner, you know, it's a lot like, a little bit like Patrick Sertain last year. He's jumped on the scene and it's, Okay, yeah, defensive rookie of the year and already one of the best corners in football. Like, no doubt. Like, a corner that is in the top five of football as a rookie. So, yeah, it's it's Sauce Gardner for me. There, there's one other guy that I want to mention. Yeah, who is it? Who I has love a it. Ch- he's, he's, not, he's not it now, yeah. but he's got a chance in the second half. Right. Kirby Joseph, mm. the Lions safety, who had right. two interceptions. On Sunday, we, we we do our weekly awards at PFT. He's our rookie of the week, and he had a great he had a great comment on social media. Uh, to be honest, I just been farting. Y'all ain't seen poop emoji yet. Oh, so man. Uh, great, thank you. So he's 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 yes, that but that that's, that's what he said. That's what he said. So it's not me, it's him. And and the the whole point is they have seen the potential. He just hasn't had the breakout. He had the breakout on Sunday against the Packers if he continues that and if the Lions can win some more games. I, I think we're understating the value of being on a decent team. You know, those odds Agreed. for offensive rookie of the year that had yeah. Damian Pierce and Ken Walker the third so close. I don't know who I don't know why you're betting on Damian Pierce right now because the the Texans are bad and if you're on a good team you have a better chance of getting that award typically. So uh I, I'll go Sauce Gardner though, but keep an eye on Kirby Joseph. Because like he it. could he could he could do the coming up on the outside and uh, as we get down the down home stretch, the home stretch through down the turn the, or yeah. whatever the <laughs> horse racing terms are. All right, uh, let's take a break. When we return, Wednesday means power rankings time. We'll take a look at at oh oh no, it's not even that boy. Jeez. I'm all out of Jeez. it's not come power on. power rankings still to come. I don't know how we're going to fit it all in. After further review is next, a Wednesday tradition here on PFT Live, one on which I'd com- of which I'd completely forgotten. We'll do that when PFT Live continues right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.